Well, what's the difference between Celtic and Rangers, I wonder? Not a lot, as you've just seen in this Premier League campaign. There's effectively a Rangers old firm win between them. Otherwise, their league records scarily similar. They've both, both lost at Motherwell. They've both drawn at Kilmarnock and Aberdeen. So they're separated by that 3-2 Rangers win at Ibrox in December. Rangers with a six-point advantage, Celtic with a game in hand. And it all comes down to this. It won't settle anything, but it could give a key pointer as to where the title will end up at the end of the season. Will Rangers hit back? Will Celtic take a step towards a hat-trick of title wins? Here's the Celtic side. Chris Sutton and Boba Balde have both recovered from hamstring trouble and play in their normal places. Johan Mialbi continues his comeback towards full match sharpness. He can't really be there yet. And he's the only difference from the team which uh, knocked out Stuttgart in the UEFA Cup. So Celtic one player away from full strength, Henrik Larsson. It's important that Celtic get a result today. They have to win the match, there's no doubt about that. And when you look at that team, to do that, they'll have to defend well. Mialbi, Balde, Valharan, those three have lost six goals in the last two Old Firm games. They've got to improve on that, on that record. And today, against the pace of the Rangers' front three, will they go man for man? And will they pull a wing back back the way? Only time will tell. Celtic minus Larson, Rangers minus De Boer. Ronald De Boer hasn't made it because of a calf injury problem. He's out. His injury, though, does allow Peter Lovenkrantz, a lucky charm for Rangers in these old firm matches, to return to the starting lineup. Arthur Newman's out as well, and Jerome Bonnicel, the Frenchman, has his first taste of this famous fixture. It's a strong Rangers team as well when you look at it, especially the middle three. Rickson, Ferguson, Arteta, they're very strong, they're playing very well at the moment. And whoever controls that area this game today, they could well go on and win the match. And I'm also looking forward to, I've got to say, the, the battles, and take my word for it, it won't be battles between Moore and Amoruso and Chris Sutton and John Hartson. It's that moment for these players as they prepare to exit the Celtic Park Tunnel and enter the wall of sound that is an old firm match. Harry Ferguson and Paul Lambert, teammates with Scotland, big rivals this Saturday lunchtime. And it would be a big psychological blow to be struck by either if they can win this one. If Rangers win, they will feel the title is theirs. If Celtic can uh, claw back those vital three points, then it's very much Sunday game on. It certainly is. It'll certainly be game on, game on this lunchtime, Rob. No question about that. It's a magnificent atmosphere here at Celtic Park. We can hardly hear ourselves think never mind anything else. And really, this has got to be a classic. Both teams really have to go for it. Celtic desperate for all three points. They have to get all three points. And that man there, Mike McCurry, he could have a difficult afternoon because there'll be a lot of passion out there. The traditional Celtic sing song. And it's going to be a well-sung song in the next couple of weeks with two UEFA Cup ties to come against Liverpool as well, playing for a place in the semi-finals of that competition. The Rangers fans would settle for the title, having had two years without since Martin O'Neill took charge at Celtic. Rob Douglas has played just twice in 11 weeks for the Celtic top, the top team, both the games against Stuttgart in the UEFA Cup. He, he can't be 100%, but he certainly hasn't let Celtic down since his return. And at the other end, Stefan Kloss, 200 games for Rangers, and he hasn't put many feet or hands wrong in that time, although it's surprising to find out that it's three years since he boasted an old firm clean sheet. Well, it's a first time for everything, and it's a first old firm match in charge for Mike McCarty, 11 years, a Class 1 official, seven years on the FIFA list as well, but uh, he's sure to have butterflies in his stomach preparing for this one. Three years to the 
day since Rangers last one here at Celtic Park. 1-0 it was then. Rod Wallace got the only goal. Seconds out. Round three. Rounds one and two have been spectacular. Three all here in October. 3-2 Rangers and Ibrox in December. Can we possibly get another game to rival those two? I think we will, Rob, to be honest with you. I think there'll be goals in the match as well. The way the, the, the system that both teams play, Celtic playing three at the back, Rangers almost set, they're going to play three up front. That's the situation that creates lots of chances at both ends of the field, and that gives you a fair chance of getting goals. First touch from Willis Ross, restored to that right back berth. Kevin Muscat must get the message, I think. The challenge early on from Bobo Baldi. And Thompson clears. And that's all the way through. And Stefan Kloss just dropped that back into the penalty box. Not one to panic. <laughs> <laughs> no, a safe play from the goalkeeper. Lots of call for his good experience. He knew exactly what he was doing there. If Morris Ross is fit, Sunday Morris Ross plays. He's a better player, Rob, it's as simple as that. He's a better uh, footballer. Kevin Muscat has got lots of good qualities as a defender, but used to the ball, passing the ball, awareness, Morris Ross is much, much better in my opinion. And that suits him playing in this Rangers team. Lorenzo Amoruso broke his nose again at Livingston last Sunday, live on the BBC. But he was never going to miss out on this one, although he missed out on finding his target with that long range pass. But he will give it everything. He always does in this game. He certainly will. It was a poor ball from him there, but uh, he's getting a bit of a bit of a bird from the, the Celtic supporters. But he'll realise that. He'll love that. That'll boost him more than anything else. So Lorenzo Amoruso coming off the team bus as Rangers arrive here, and uh, the Celtic fans love to hate him, but that's uh, generally because he does so well against them. Yeah, you see Chris Sutton here just putting his arm across the front of Amoruso. Mike McQuarrie, good view of the whole incident, and right by one the free kick to Rangers. Good ball winning from Mikel Arteta. He's found some strength since coming to Rangers. If you would have had one criticism of it, it would be that he's a, a fairly frail looking player, but uh, he can mix it. Rob Douglas gets his hands on the ball. Never any doubt that he was going to play. But uh, there is the gamble element for, from a Celtic viewpoint. If he does have an injury with Cannons, there are a lot of big games to come. The tackles flying in, and Peter Lovenkratz was onside and almost through. Good cut out from Baldi. It's a warning to Celtic early on, Bobo Baldi managed to get there just in time, but Lovenkratz, he was onside, he was on his bike, and Bobo Baldi missed that ball, and he's through the keeper. Chris Ross lofts it forward for Fernando Rickson, can't get there. It's an interesting Rangers lineup. this. They've done it before, and uh, Ivan Klish has done it again. Neil McCann and Peter Lovenkrantz, both in a very pacey strike force. The pace is uh, something that's, that uh, Rangers certainly try to exploit. Lovenkrantz has played, played central striker on a few occasions, especially against Celtic. He's managed to get goals against them, and you can fully understand uh, the Klish's selection. He's certainly playing in that uh, central area this afternoon. One subs appearance for Lovin Crunch since the winter break. Needs games, but Talent McLeish feels he can pitch him straight in here. And pitching straight in there was Fernando Rickson with a late one on Alan Thompson and a free kick to Celtic. I don't think Thompson was going anywhere. Not, for, not an awful lot in that. More Fernando Rickson's arm more than anything else, but I think the ball was running out the park and good experience from Thompson. Thompson's cross, John Hartson couldn't quite get there, Bonacel heads it clear. Balde claimed he was being held by Neil McCann, which would have been some achievement. Johan Yaldi had Dani, and that's out. That's good play from Neil McCann. Mialbi was closed down really quick by Neil McCann, they forced him into the early pass. Mialbi couldn't lift his head, and that's why he played it out of the field. Thompson's cross here was beyond the head of Hartson and Bobo Baldi wasn't quite sure whether to go all the way into the penalty box, made a late decision to push up. And 
that's out from Alan Thompson. It's a poor ball again, but uh, as we said earlier about, about McCann, Loving Cran's close Thompson down that time. And again, forced the early pass, but it's forced the error. Neil McCann getting a run of games for Rangers recently, but uh, this only his 100th start in more than four years with Rangers. It's been an injury interrupted career at Ibrox for him. But he is capable of delivering that high quality final ball into the box. Chris Sutton, the target. Lead off for Alan Thompson. Again, Fernando Rickson very quickly getting to Thompson and to Lambert. Not much room to think out there for less play. It's fast and it's frantic. And it matters so much. And Valadze doing his defensive duties. And a good pass out for Mikel Arteta. One player ahead of him is Peter Lohenkrantz. Getting there, Neil McCann. And that wasn't what Neil McCann wanted. Rushed the pass, Mikel Arteta. And it's not like him. It's not like him, no, it's a poor ball from him. But a good break from Rangers. Short arm, the lads win the ball almost inside his own 18 yard box and played a marvellous pass to Arteta. Lots of space, driving forward. A good ball to McCann. Trying to play the lot one two here, but too much weight on the ball from Arteta. A player of his standard, his quality, he'll see that as a, as a mistake, a bad pass. Normally full of composure, the young Spaniards, but not that time. Harry the pass. Rangers chance of putting some pressure on Celtic was gone for the moment. That was a push by Craig Moore and Chris Sutton. And it's an interesting battle, isn't it? Moore and Amoruso versus Sutton and Hartson. I'm looking forward to that one, Rob. It's like a heavyweight, say, heavyweight title fight, isn't it? As they, as they say, they will get stuck into each other in the best possible way, of course. Thompson's free kick. That went Ferguson and Ross. And Samaruso prods it away from Baldi. McCann to Arteta. That's good. Defensive midfield play from Paul Lambert. Immediately took the sting out of that Rangers attack. That's great play from Lambert. Arteta thought he could take him for pace. But Paul showed he's got that little burst there. No question, it's still there. Jerome Bonicel. That's straight down the throat to Rios Valharan. And the Albi clears. And Lambert flips it towards Hartson. Alec McLeish has this uh, marvellous record against Celtic. Six old four matches unbeaten, three wins and three draws. And he looks quiet at the moment, Chick. Yeah, he's been wanting the ball played forward earlier. There was a run by Loving Krantz earlier on. Uh, the ball should be delivered to him. That's the message he got across the midfield players. Loving Krantz tries to get past Balde. And the reinforcements were there in the form of Neil Lennon. Celtic pushed the ball around calmly. And their self belief has been done no harm at all by their continuing run in the UEFA Cup competition. They've taken big scalps. And that obviously adds to confidence for Martin O'Neill and his team. They're yeah, absolutely right, Rob. And you can see it in the way they're playing. Over Balde, there was a marvellous start for Loving Krantz. Mistake by Craig Moore, handed it to Cillian Petrov. And the final ball for either team so far, not quite coming off. That was a mistake from Petrov. A mistake first of all from Moore, it's a poor pass. Chris Sutton going one way, Cillian Petrov has a quick look. I think he expected Chris Sutton just to check back the way and go down the inside left channel. Lack of communication there. And Sunday nerves do play a part. You might have played in this game time and time again, but uh, there is so much at stake and it's such an atmosphere. The atmosphere creates that, Rob. Uh, you know, the crowd, they encourage you, they demand that you play well, you, get, you, you battle away, you win tackles, you work hard. And because of that, because of the nervousness that creates, there's always going to be mistakes made. I'm just looking at the, the, the systems, Rob. Celtic are quite happy to go man for man at the back. And the, the movement of Lovinkrans, especially so far, has been very, very good. And if it comes man for man with his pace, you know, Rangers could maybe just about catch Celtic on the break. Well, Harren's throw. Craig Moore headed it away, and the decision goes against John Hartson. Alleged to have backed into the Rangers defender here when the ball was in the air. I think uh, Mike McCurry's indicating it's a pull. You know, he's indicating it was a tug on his shirt. I didn't see it personally. Still haven't seen it. Uh, 
And that, there's not much in there. I'm a bit surprised that the referee's pulling that one up because you know those two are big physical players, and they're going to they're going to challenge a lot. They're going to put their bodies in amongst each other. And as a contact sport, that's allowed. Up went Avalanza to flick it away from Valharan. The onrushing Valde won it for Celtic. Now Thompson for Sutton. Tried to work that through to John Hartson, well cut out by Craig Moore. Celtic still on the ball. Arteta and Ferguson combine well. Buddy Ferguson hesitated and uh, Chris Sutton was on top of him, literally. And Buddy Ferguson in some pain. I think Barry actually lost the ball there just for a second, lost control of the ball. And Chris Sutton, you see it there, he just stumbles just that little bit, giving Chris Sutton the chance to win the ball. But Chris eventually is all over the top of him. And he's the one for Mike McCurry to award the free kick. You see it here, Barry just stutters that little bit there, Chris trying to take advantage. It's only his enthusiasm more than anything else that, that forces a free kick. Rangers, it goes without saying, don't want to lose their skipper, Barry Ferguson. In addition to being the, the midfield playmaker, he's also one of their big goal threats this season with 16 already. Yeah, he's got a lot of goals. You can see the area where he's hurt, Rob. I'm sure just a little bit of time will make the recovery. Rangers certainly don't want to lose him, and uh, I'm sure they'll settle down. Barry will have to go off for a minute or so. If that, so if that Rangers technical area looks agitated, then you can understand why. A big player, and he's combined well with Ronald De Boer this season. They do different things, but they certainly dovetail well. De Boer already out of the match, and uh, they don't want to continue without Ferguson. Neil McCann has been withdrawn to the midfield area in the temporary absence of Barry Ferguson. Ferguson back on the pitch, much to the relief of the Rangers supporters. The left foot of Alan Thompson, Chris Sutton stumbled, reckoned he was pushed when the ball was in the air, pushed by Lorenzo Amoruso, Mike McCurry and interested in the claim. I think it's exactly the same as the previous challenge, I don't think this is a free kick, I didn't think the previous one was a free kick. It's two big guys going for the ball again, Chris trying to make the best of it. As a Celtic support, the crowd demand the free kick from the referee. But that's a free kick against Craig Moore. It was good skill from Chris Sutton, who flipped the ball over his head, and he was then taken out by Moore. You see here, it's good touch from Chris. Good turn of pace, good awareness to get round, and Craig Moore certainly obstructed him that time. Celtic have Valharan, Baldi and Yalbi all up from the back alongside Hartson and Sutton. There's John Hartson and it's well defended by Shota Avaladze. That's a great challenge from the striker. Celtic has so much of a threat at set pieces, so many big lads in there. Avaladze is picking up Hartson and that'll be a challenge for him, but he certainly won that battle. Petrov's corner kick blocked by Mikel Arteta. And they'll have to come back. Mike McCurry reckons Mikel Arteta wasn't ten metres away. I tell you, Rob, if he slow the referee, he certainly played on to start with. And eventually, for whatever reason, he deemed to bring it back and say that Arteta was too close. Whatever he does today, he's not going to get universal agreement, that's for sure. Petrov tries again, missed by everyone, and so close, right into the danger area. It's a great ball in, John Hartson just can't make contact here. It's an opportunity when you see it, you can see it clearly eventually. And you would actually expect John Hartson to stick that ball in the back of the net, he's only five yards out, snatched at it more than anything else. The more you see of it, Sandy, the more you think that was a great chance for John Hartson, who's got this terrific scoring record with Celtic, 46 goals and... 57 starts, he's scored goals wherever he's been, Coventry, Wimbledon, West Ham, Arsenal, Luton, and uh, as you saw the reruns of that, you just thought Hudson was odds on to tuck that away. Alan Thompson looking for Hudson, that's a great header from Lorenzo Amoruso, he was at full stretch. Arteta turning back into trouble, and Rangers on a free kick. Taken quickly to Rickson. Finds his way to Neil McCann. Now Avalanza. McCann again. Good footwork from Neil McCann. But that's well defended by Jos Valharan. 
Celtic very calmly playing it out. And Paul Lambert was fouled as he played the ball away. And Fernando Rickson sees a yellow card. He's seen a couple of reds in his time in this fixture. And that's a yellow for him early on, which curtails his involvement. He's got to get the road, Rob. He's very, very late. No question, that's dangerous play, almost standing on the foot of Paul Lambert there. Mike McCurry, he's right, he's absolutely spot on there. That's a bad, dangerous tackle from Rickson. And I can't believe he stands and argues after that. He's trying to uh, fight his case and say there was a pull or whatever, but really, there's no excuse for that type of tackle. I think it's and, in his contract. And, but it's silly, Rob, as you said there, you know, puts him under pressure the rest of the match. His game is all about winning the ball, making tackles, and now he really is under pressure that if he missed times one more tackle, he just could be a man shot. Alec McLeish having a word with uh, Mikel Arteta, who trotted across to the touchline. But this was a, a promising-looking attack for Rangers. It's a good chance, Rob. You see Neil McCann picking up the ball here. He should pass it back. Arteta screaming for it at the edge of the box, just coming into the picture there. McCann should have laid it back the way, and it would have been a chance for Arteta. I think Alec McLeish is maybe saying to Arteta there, shoot for the ball, try and scream, and Neil McCann may have uh, passed it to him. Nearly 16 minutes gone at Celtic Park, the third Old Firm match of the season. Still goalless, but uh, blinking you might miss something. Paul Lambert's back on the pitch, having suffered in that challenge from Rickson. And Celtic played the ball out with a fair bit of style from the back. That's Amaruso. First there, Mialbi. And cleverly left by Lorenzo Amaruso. Sold John Hartson a dummy. Well, we've heard about uh, Alec McLeish's early exchanges on the touchline, what about Martin O'Neill, check. There's been much conversation with uh, both managers and their players. Martin O'Neill called Didier Gatt across a moment or two. Interestingly, he wants him to get forward, and Alec McLeish had a word with Neil McCann telling him to get forward. We thought we might have seen a lot of runs match down the wing there, but they're telling both the wing players to get forward, and, and I think Mark, Alec McLeish in particular feels that McCann is too deep. Hartson's header. And that's well dealt with by Maurice Ross. He's a developing player. That's a great player off from the youngster. He actually managed to, to tuck in, cover his central defenders, as you should do playing full-back. And just nice, calm, composed, and made sure he cleared the ball. That one, Bobo Balde. Only one winner there against Avalanta. Bonicel to McCann. Avalanta's flick. Well seen, well cut out by Neil Lennon. That's good touch, good control from Chris Sutton. And uh, well, Fernando Rickson isn't letting the yellow card hold him back, is he? That's a silly challenge. I, I don't think there's enough water in it. I think he puts his foot completely on the ball, so there's no danger to the player. In fact, Chris Sutton actually made contact with Rickson, but it's a fact to make McCurry saying it's dangerous play. The foot was raised, and that's why he's allowed to the free kick. And that man has to be really careful now. Careful and calm down, I don't think they're in his vocabulary too often in these games. Lennon's free kick, it's beyond Sutton, and it's out. But it's strange of that type of situation now that uh, Alan McLeish finds Fernando Rickson in. Alec has got to be saying to himself, what do I do here? You know, Rickson, he's got to get to him, he's got to get him to calm down. Craig Moore's speaking to him at the moment, because if he doesn't calm down, we just going to end up with, uh, with ten men. Now the has got to be saying to himself, do I change it? Do I think about a substitution? You can see it in his eyes, Fernando Rixer. Plays with passion, no complaints about that, but uh, you have to ally a bit of common sense with that as well. That's Lovin Kranz. By Valanza, trying to turn away from Valhadan and good goalkeeping from Rod Douglas. Good play from the big keeper there. Thompson for Sutton, through to Hartson. Sutton claimed he was being held by Craig Moore. And Craig Moore must be sailing pretty close to a yellow card. In fact, he's getting it. No complaints again from Craig Moore. Good play from Celtic. Hartson and Sutton linking well up front. He's done a great job, hasn't he, Chris Sutton, in the first 20 minutes. He's all over the place and he's pulling the Rangers' defence around. And that's forcing the mistakes, that's forcing, that's forced that yellow card. Yeah, they're, they're making life difficult for the defenders. They, they won't let them settle, they're fine for every ball. And when that happens, you're going to win three kicks. 
Well, it's definitely in shooting range, isn't it, for Australian Petrov or Alan Thompson? It's Petrov, the wall did its job. In from Thompson, Amoruso there, and puts it back to Stefan Kloss. That's good defender from Amoruso again. Totally aware of where he was, where his goalkeeper was. But a, a pure free kick earlier. Remember our man of the match competition, 910 225. Who do you reckon is going to be the top player on show this afternoon? Good run from Agats, Amaruso there. Terrific defensive positioning from Amaruso again. Bonacel is under pressure. Celtic four. That's the first time we've seen Didier Gagan down that right hand side, and that man there is your own work. Bonacel is quick. We've seen that last week. But I tell you what, Didier Gagan's quicker and he showed it in that run. They came through the Montpellier Youth Academy in France together, Agat and Bonicel, so the, the two Frenchmen know each other well. Yaldi's throw, Chris Sutton was there. Uh, again, he wasn't happy with the challenge, this time from Bonicel, looked pleadingly towards Mike McCarry. You can see this contact made again, Chris Sutton trying to control the ball in his chest here, Bonicel just did his back, just a little nudge more than anything else, not enough to award the penalty kick, that's for certain. Although Chris Sutton's still looking for it. But if you're a defender, Sandy, you want to be making a challenge, you don't want Chris Sutton to get free use of the ball. You've got a challenge, and it's a good challenge for Bonicella. Just enough, just a nice to put him off balance so he can control the ball. And it was certainly a good defender. Bonicell has started pretty well. Looks very calm, as he should. He's 30 next month, and he's got a lot of experience with Bordeaux. He's played in the Champions League. Here he is again, good header. And Yalbi. Up and under, and it's Sutton versus Amoruso. Round seven. <laughs> you see, Chris Sutton doesn't agree with that one bit. I think you see good play from Amoruso. He gets himself in front of the Celtic striker here. He's always favourite to win the ball, and because he's possession, Chris Sutton can't get there, can't win it unless he gives away the free kick. And a good decision from the referee. Nearing the midway point in the first half. On his cell for Arvalata. Support comes from McCann. Maybe McCann will struggle to catch that. The Rangers get the ball forward into the final third. It's just that final pass which is not quite happening for them. It's not happened so far. The, the Celtics, we say, they're going man for man at the back. and They have managed to defend well so far, but that man there, no McCann, is so quick, he's so dangerous, he's so direct. He's actually played up against Johan Mialbi most of the time. And I think McCann just might have the pace, of, pace to go beyond Mialbi. Thompson. And it's beyond Petrov and bobbles all the way through to Stefan Kloss. It's very even so far, Rob. Mainly in the midfield battle. Both teams trying hard to get control of the match. And every player on that path, as you would expect, working exceptionally hard. Ricks into Ferguson. Bonicel, up to Harry and drove it straight at Valharan. Amaruso, Morris Ross did well to get there before Chris Sutton, who wins a free kick. Morris Ross, of course, no stranger to this old firm match. And uh, the experience is coming through. It is great composure there. It would have been easy just to knock that ball away, but tried to control it and play the pass. And Chris Sutton again giving away the free kick. He's another one that's going to have to be careful. We've seen Craig Muir in the book for three or four defences against him. Chris Sutton's offences are starting to mount up as well. Yeah, if you play the game like Moore and Rickson, you don't really want an early yellow in this game. That's a Celtic free kick given against Arteta. The temperature has gone down a little bit, but I'm not sure about the gloves. <laughs> it's a Spanish treat, isn't it? Just yeah. a little bit cold for him. Compared to San Sebastian. Yeah. <laughs> nice time of the year to be in Spain. Aldi has gone forward for the free kick. Played in by Lennon. And free kick against Hartson. Nate McCurry saying it's a pull again, but I think he's backing in more than anything else. You can see it there, Barry Ferguson finding his corner. I don't think it was a pull, it's more backing in. Again, I don't see an awful lot in that one, to be honest with you. Again, both challenging for the ball. John Harson, obviously, the bigger size. 
give it a spectacular run back. That's a player using his physique, yeah. you would have thought. And that's some physique. 22 goals for the season for Hartson. Two of them against Hibbs last Sunday. He's a good player, Rob. He's a very, very good goal scorer. Rickson plays it over the top for Avalanza. And Yaldi defended it perfectly. Good play from the big sweep. Doing what you would expect, covering round about the back area, trying to find the, the space in the side channel. A big kick out from Douglas, finds Sutton. And Bonisel, Ferguson, with Petrov snapping at his heels. Moore for Lovenkrantz, and uh, there's maybe a sign in the play of Peter Lovenkrantz that he needs a game or two. Well, that's just a bad touch for me. You know, at this level of football, that shouldn't happen. The ball's a good ball from Moore into Lovenkrantz's feet. He's got to take a touch, hold on to the ball, and link your midfield players in. Sutton and Thompson combine. Kept in by Alan Thompson, that's a terrific cross. Neil McCann was there doing the defending. Arteta won the header. And a free kick against Mikel Arteta. He he's looks bemused. He's not happy, Rob, you're right, uh, you see it here. But it's, that's, a, that's a free kick, no question. No real intention of going for the ball. Looking more at the player and jumping into the player to try and gain the advantage. And good decision again for Mike McCurry. He's got more straight so far. Thompson's free kick. Boba Balde won the header. Couldn't really direct it under pressure from Amoruso. That's a mistake by Avalanza. The Rangers finally get it clear. And this cue in the header from Paul Lambert. But that's heading out. Celtic just a little bit exposed there. Bobo Balde, the big defenders up to the, the free kick. Paul Lambert, last man. Good touch from him. Ferguson and Arteta. Now with Bonicel, time to measure the cross. What a good one, though. Petrov's there. Back with Bonicel. Avalanza, Arteta! A great chance for Mikel Arteta to score a second old firm goal. Best chance in the match, no question. Good play from Rangers. Bonacel winning the ball back here, a good ball at the box, an intelligent pass, Arvalaza just laying it off, and Arteta left foot. Good challenge from the Celtic players to put him under pressure, just couldn't get it on target, just a yard past the post. And Alex, a little bit disappointed, what we say about that one. <laughs> good chance for Arteta, and brilliant set-up work by Shota Arvalaza. It was an awkward ball coming towards him, and he, he did so well to get behind it, to knock it down, to put it on a plate for Arteta, and uh, the ex-Spaniard really wanted to hit the target with that. That's the secret, got to hit the target. John Hartson, running at the Rangers' defence, deflected off Craig Moore, and gathered by Gloss. That's good defender from Rangers. Hartson was always looking to get the shot off here, still in Petrov to slip the ball to him. But watch the blue jerseys round about Hartson here. So many round the belt, very, very difficult to get a yard of space to try and get the shot on target. Arteta has been very much involved in the first half so far. Within the 29th minute. Oh, we're missing as a goal. Avalanza's well, control it and down that time. Back from the Albi to Douglas. Rob Douglas getting closer and closer to full fitness. Thompson back heels it from Lennon. Lambert, Sutton's back heel. Yes, Valhallen pushing up. Peter Lovenkrantz went back with him. Good play from Lovenkrantz, working back the way. I think McCurry's changed his mind. The award with a throw in, first of all, to Rangers. And is it a free kick or a throw? I'm not sure. It is a throw. But there's some confusion among the players. That's another good challenge from Lovenkrantz, robbing Thompson of possession as he dallied. Big Moore, not convincing. Petrov, just wide. That's poor defending from Rangers. A fortunate here is he just sloppy at the back, not the say so. Petrov gets a shot off and actually takes a deflection off Lorenzo Amoruso for the corner kick. 
the poor defender from Rangers, first time you can see that in the match. Stephanie Claus, to his credit, would have covered it if it'd been on target. The left foot of Alan Thompson, ahead of Johan Mjalbe. Ferguson tries to get it away, and he was fouled in the process of clearing by Jos Valharan. He's the one from the referee, but I tell you what, it's like himself. we don't see the corner kick coming there. But you see Valharan just catching Ferguson as the two of them are going for the ball. But the concern was the, the free header from Johan Mjalbe at the corner kick. We'll see the corner here, Thompson. It's the back here, it's Rickson that's picking up Mialbi, but it's a free header, a big Swede wins it well, and that ball is in there, a really dangerous area. Creates havoc in the Rangers' defence. Useful Haran, it's a silly free kick to give away. Problem for Rangers, of course, Sandy, is who do you pick up when you've got Mialbi, Valharan, Valde, Sutton, Hartson? It's a difficult one. And that's the rules, that's the way they play, and Celtic, I'm sure, will try to take full advantage of that. Neil Lennon. Gets it back from Chris Sutton. Now Paul Lambert. Sutton involved again. Waits for the run of Alan Thompson to the byline. Tempting ball in, and Amoruso flicks it away. That's great play from Alan Thompson down that left-hand side again. Marvellous balls into the box, hard to defend against, but Amoruso, he's in the top of his form today. But that man there is getting marvellous balls in, just watch it here. That's a great ball, asking to get attacked. And the disappointment from Celtic's point of view is certain ha uh, Hartson. They're not round about Armour, so to put him under pressure. Let's find out what the touchline talk is from Jack. Rangers definitely want a bit more width into their play, Rob. They're trying to get Bonnie Cell to come wide and get the ball out to him. Yeah, I think that uh, Andy Watts in particular having a go at Bonnie Cell, telling him to come to the touchline and get close to roll the ball to him. Bonicel's cross, Lovenkrantz trying to get his head to it, it's Rickson, it's off Valde, and Lennon has time, and leaves it to Rob Douglas. Better play from Rangers, Rickson you think, he's a vast uh, space inside the box, tries to get his shot off, well, but unfortunately couldn't get on target, blocked again. Now Celtic have a big problem here, Didi Agat is off the pitch, getting some treatment, and uh, he's been in such prime form for them. This could be a, a worry for Martin O'Neill, and they have to make a change. And we've got a massive blow up, the guy has to come off. He's such a dangerous player going forward. We'll see here, it's going to sell, and the guy in the challenge. Nothing in it whatsoever, both players trying to win the ball. And the guy looks as if it might be his right hamstring. A telltale sign of the hand reaching down to the back of the thigh. I think he's finished. And he's out of it. I got the game is over. The hamstring and Rob, it's, it's one of those injuries, you just can't play on with it. If it goes, there's no way back. And uh, you would think, Chick, that it uh, might be Momo Sila for Didi Agat. Spot on Robin, the very man, is getting stripped in the, the dugout now. In some instructions from Steve Walford, and that change we made ASAP. Celtic with 10 on the pitch. Temporarily. Jerome Bonicel back to Neil McCann. Avalanza. Good defending from Bobo Balde. Avalanza just tried to flick it on to Peter Lovenkrantz. Good work again from Morris Ross. Any sign of hesitation from Alan Thompson, and he's in. This time it's Arteta, who stops the flow from the Celtic midfielder. Shot to Arbeladze, the Celtic shot swarming around him, but he got his pass away. Ferguson White from McCann. Neil McCann's cross, Baldi, head and shoulders above everyone. Morris Ross with a shot, but he didn't really catch it, and it's gone well wide. That was ambitious to see the least there from Morris Ross. I think Rangers trying to take advantage of the fact that Celtic have only got ten men in the park at the moment. Here's your, old, here's your old pal coming on. Yeah, Momo, I'm sure he'll come on, I'm sure he'll do well. He's quite comfortable playing that right wing back position. Like a guy, he's very quick, a little bit unpredictable when he gets in the last third, but more than capable. 
I'm sure he won't let anybody down. And I sometimes think, Sandy, that the form of Didier Agat mirrors the form of Celtic, and uh, and he has got himself back to his best in recent times, and he's got to be a big miss for them. He will be, the way he's been playing, the, the, the supply against the strikers going down that right-hand side is immense, we've seen that in Stuttgart. Big challenge for Momo Salah now. Chris Sutton kept that in. Back with Thompson. Petrov's in the box. And it doesn't get that far, courtesy of Morris Ross, who is having an excellent first half. He's played well. I thought just earlier on, Rob, I thought he might have won a free kick. Alan Thompson, he won the ball off Thompson. And I thought Thompson actually just failed him to win it back. Hartson against Amaruso. Lead back for Chris Sutton. Good block from Chris from Greg Moore. Back again from Baharin, but that's too close to the keeper. Easy take for Stefan Kloss. That's a poor ball that time from just Baharin. Left foot down the left-hand side. You've got to give the uh, Sutton and Hartson decent ammunition to attack the ball. Confirmation from the Celtic technical area that uh, it's a hamstring problem, which has ruled out Didier Agat. I wonder if he'll be ready for the big games to come. Two against Liverpool and another old firm match, of course, next weekend. And if it's a hamstring, then he's got to be a big guy. The, the big plus from Celtic's point of view, Rob, he's off right away. You know, he didn't aggravate it by playing on and causing more damage, so it depends if it's tweaked or not. It might just be a strain more than anything else, so I'm sure the Celtic fans will be hoping he'll make it. McCann, Ferguson, Arteta and Ross. Nice flick from Fernando Rickson, caught by Lambert. Arteta in and a good reach from Rob Douglas. A shot at Avalad's awaited. It's a good move from Rangers, great ball from Rickson, great run from Arteta. And Rob Douglas made it look easy. And down the pitch, good defending from Craig Moore, who swept it back under pressure from John Hartson, swept it back to his keeper. I just watching Fernando Rickson, Rob, he's not happy with the referee, just uh, that build-up to that move uh, for Rangers, he played a marvellous ball down the length of Arteta, and Paul Lambert certainly caught him very, very late, and he's aggrieved at the fact that there's no action against Lambert, yeah, where I see he received the, the, the yellow card. Making it fairly clear was Fernando Rickson to Mike McCarry that he felt yellow should have been shown to Paul Lambert for just the challenge, in which uh, Rickson was carded earlier in the match. And of course the yellow cards could be crucial as this game goes on with Rangers already suffering two and uh, Fernando Rickson has a case. He has, it's a late tackle from Paul, it's a little bit of revenge as much as anything else but uh, maybe because of Rickson's attitude at times and the way he speaks to referees sometimes that can go against you, and that's a perfect example, I'm just watching the two of them at the moment, they're having words, Lambert and Rickson. Ranting and raving tends not to pay off in the long term and he's still going on and on about it, Fernando Rickson. But the facts are, two yellows for Rangers, Celtic still to get off the mark in that respect. Baharin's header, Sila hurried the pass. Didier Agat back in the dugout, but out of the match check. Yeah, he's uh, right at the back of the dugout, Rob, uh, there he is, and just I uh, can tell you that he's actually resting his leg on an ice pack, and Sandy's prognosis might not be, might be spot on, actually, because it doesn't look that bad Steady to get back on. out. <laughs> I thought Dr Clark may have it right on this particular occasion and uh, he's sitting with his leg resting on an ice pack at the moment. He says he wants to be known as Staff Nurse Clark, not, <laughs> not Dr Clark. He's got a uniform. So we'll find out in the days to come about Agat's possible involvement in Thursday's match against Liverpool, next Sunday's match against Rangers and of course the following Thursday. The return match against Liverpool at Anfield and... That's a Celtic corner, conceded by Morris Ross. They had to rob his good plays, a marvellous ball into Chris Sutton, and uh, Morris Ross managed to, to match the run of the Celtic players to give away the corner kick. Another set-piece threat for Rangers to try to cope with. Ross punched the Petrov corner. And Momo Silla missed his shot completely. Still going up. That's a good ball then. Flicked away by Ross, only as far as Valhara. Good pass to Petrov, and again it's Morris Ross in the way. Lambert, and quickly out was Fernando Rickson. That's terrific defending from Rangers under pressure. A good play from Celtic, putting them under pressure, but you watch the Blue Jerseys again attacking the ball. Morris Ross first, breaking to Lambert, and Fernando Rickson being brave, being solid, making sure there was no way he was going to get that shot on target. 
He's not fired up or anything, is he? The Petrov corner. Played in with a lot of pace at the near post, and that's a difficult one to defend. It's a great corner kick. Lots of pace, power in the ball. Going towards the keeper, and Barry Ferguson managed to get his head to it. That kind of touch with the head can end up anywhere. I think Barry directed it well. Petrov's corner flipped on by Valharan. Goal kick this time. Rangers breathe a sigh of relief. Good touch from Valharan. Not the same quality in the corner kick from Petrov. It's fast and it's furious, and it's not surprising. It's always this way when Celtic and Rangers come together. Martin O'Neill's 14th experience of this fixture. Won six of his first seven, but of course no joy in the last half dozen since Alec McLeish took charge at Ibrox. Amaruso caught by Momosila as he cleared the ball away. No question, it's a free kick. I think Momo's momentum more than anything else takes him into Amaruso. Big Lorenzo's always going to get the ball first. Wasn't taking any chances, was he? <laughs> he made sure it was foot first. He made good contact with the ball. I like some more at times. Yeah, he had a good run on the BBC last Sunday, I seem to recall. <laughs> Bonacel down the line from McCann. Gets his pass away to Arteta. Still goalless heading for half-time. And the two teams have done a pretty good job of trying to cancel each other out. It's been intriguing, isn't it? It's 100 miles an hour stuff. Not a lot of good football, but I tell you what, you can't take your eyes off it. You just don't know what's going to happen next. And that's what makes this fix so special. Valde. The can intercepted. That's for Rickson, but Thompson always favourite. Thompson sometimes an underplayed influence in the Celtic side. Was that a shot at goal from Lorenzo? <laughs> but it's intriguing, Rod, just as we were saying there, both teams cancelling each other out. Nobody is allowed to put their foot in the ball, lift their head and play a pass. The pace is so frantic, you're closed down almost immediately as soon as you make a touch of the ball. Silas pass, Amaruso, the rock in the Rangers' defence. Is there to be a goal before the interval? Petrov, Thompson and Lambert. Again, Morris Ross getting in front of Alan Thompson as the ball's played. Just 21 years of age and uh, a player of real promise. Thompson, can find no way past Arteta. Rangers pair teamed up well there to keep out Thompson. And with Mialbi. For Sutton, forces it out wide for Momo Sila. He seemed to misjudge the pass. He couldn't quite get there, I think Momo thought uh, that Jerome Bonacel was going to step forward and take the ball, so he didn't have the full commitment to get there. That's why it was a late run at the park. Hartson's header. Chris Sutton's after it. And diverts it on to Alan Thompson. Good cross from Thompson. Amaruso gets his head to it. That was vital. And he has been vital in defence for Rangers in this first half. It always seems to be Amaruso. He's been immense, especially with cross balls. It takes a lot of responsibility because he's the biggest in that team at the back. And again, he gets there first. John Hartson penalised for pushing Bonacell. That's a better ball from Thompson again, good quality. This time the ball was attacked by Hartson. Amaruso got there first. We're inside the 45th minute, one to be added, so two to go. McCann, and that just sums up this first half, no time on the ball. Melby was immediately in at his bag the minute the ball was played down the line towards him. Good play from the big speed, as you say, typical of the game so far. Hartson flicks it. Ferguson launches it. 
All this header and Lennon there to pick up the pieces. Axel. Bonicel. No free kick given against Mialbi. It was challenge on the car. Lennon for Lambert. Neil Lennon, and then we'll look at what's on in the penalty box. Good run from Alan Thompson. Craig Moore's challenge and optimistic noises from the Celtic supporters, but no chance of a penalty. No, I don't think McCurry was ever going to get the penalty. It can't be a good play from Celtic, good run from, from Petrov, get beyond the strikers again. And Craig Moore had to be really, really careful there, committing himself just a little bit. But I think he just does enough. Yeah, just the ball out the park. And yeah, Thompson's run to the byline. And uh, I don't think Martin really believed that, that was a solid penalty claim. Arteta's pass for Lovenkrantz in behind Valharen. And for the first time, really, Peter Lovenkrantz has got in behind the Celtic defence and uh, they managed to find him with a pass. A good ball from Arteta here, Lovenkrantz staying onside, but for me, Rob, he cut back now. Just try and get beyond Valharen, keep it on his left foot, his stronger foot, and create an opportunity. And it's a third yellow card in the match, this time for Chris Sutton. I think that'll be persistent fouling. I don't think Chris can complain too much when you look at the two crossing to the Rangers players. I mean, you see that, I think the first, the first offence was committed there by Amoruso. Yeah, it's... Well, Chris Sutton is having his say, and it's not advisable. The first half has ended. And... Celtic nil, Rangers nil, the half-time scoreline. Look at the determination and the passion written all over Chris Sutton's face. Great rivalry between these two, and there's been little to choose between them so far. They know exactly how each other plays. And so far it looks highly unlikely that we're going to see a repeat of the five and six goal epics that the old firm have produced so far this season, but who knows what the second half will bring because it's uh, impossible to predict what is about to happen between the Celtic and Rangers. There have been few chances. This was certainly a good one for Mikel Arteta, set up by Shota Avaladze, and his big crime was he didn't hit the target. That was Petrov's shot deflected wide of Lorenzo Amoruso. That's about as close as we've been in the first 45 minutes at Celtic Park. Don't miss the second 45. Nil-nil, halfway through. Thanks to Rob. Yes, 11 goals in the last two matches. We can't complain too much about it being goalless so far, but it's been a, a lot of sound and fury signifying nothing, or at least not very much so far. Typical old firm encounter, I suppose, Gordon, but not a lot of football played. Not really, no. Mm. It's been uh, hard fought, you can say, but the, not too many long balls being played at times, and also uh, a lot of niggly stuff, a lot of ne needless fouls at times, but both sides are, are trying to be aggressive and, and stop the opposition playing, but it's resulted in the referee having to take quite a big part. I don't think he's always got it right, Mike McCurry, but nevertheless, it's uh, the players aren't helping him an awful lot in terms of the way this game's been played. Not not the standard we'd expect from an old firm game in terms of football. Yeah, but perhaps down to the fact that neither side can afford to lose. That, that may be a lot mm. to do with it. I mean, mm. Rain, I think Celtic have been the better side in the first half in, in terms of the, the more strength, more territorial advantage. They've been pushing mm. Rangers back. They've mm. had more balls going into the box. They've been getting in the crosses from Alan mm. Thompson. Rangers have had a few breakaways, that very one at the very end there, but in the main, that they've been under siege. And mm. I think that you know they've defended really well. And that's I think that's the reason it's still nil-nil, because mm. Moura and Marusso, born and Sale Ross at times, have done a very good job stopping Celtic playing. But certainly... Celtic, are, uh, when it comes to that kind of game, Celtic are better at it. I think they're just slightly stronger. Yeah, I mean, it is a game for strong men, Kenny, isn't it? There's no faint hearts out there. No, and you, you wouldn't expect it to be any either. Mm. Um, I think, although it's not a great spectacle, I think you've got to admire both sets of players, the way that they've closed each other down. Um, there have been one or two tactical adjustments since the start of the game. Martin's moved Petrov over to the right to take him away for the Mark and the Rickson, and he's shuffled about with his front three. Um, but Celtic have just got on, mate. Celtic have, Rangers haven't got a corner yet. Celtic are pushing up, and most of the threat has come from corners, uh, Celtic's corners. But neither team can afford to lose it, really. Uh, Rangers, because of their title aspirations, uh, would see a draw as a great result. But some of the things are draw with Celtic because it still keeps them within 
although it's yeah. six points to have a game in hand. Yeah. I mean, as you say, but sometimes when there's not been a lot of good football player in Goma, you think, well, it's been disappointing, but let's give credit for very good defending, because there has been from both sides. Well, a really good attitude mm. as well. Mm. I mean, there was criticism of Arteta in his first old firm game that said he never caught up with the pace. But he's done really well. He's been in, he's been competing, and he looks um, as if he's the one that might just slip a pass through for one of the Rangers' front three. Um, but he's competed in, against anyone that's come there, mm. Baldi, anybody. Um, he's stepped up in the game. He looks a, a good footballer. I think they've lost a wee bit since Barry Ferguson's injury. I yeah, think Barry's he's, lost a wee yeah. bit. I'm not so sure that he's, he's perfectly fit because he's been a real big player for Rangers this year with 16 goals and, and playing really well. So yeah, that's he's a, not that's been the influence since, since the injury, no, has he? and I think uh, maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe the closing down of Celtic's got a bit more to do with it as well. Yeah. John Hartson, 22 goals in 22 matches so far, Gordon, and that's been invaluable to Celtic, especially in Henrik Larsson's absence. And he's had a couple of half chances today, and not much more than that, but if he'd taken one or other, then... It's a different game, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, mm. it was down to the crosses coming mm. in. I mean, Hartson, you'd expect you want to get crosses. I would say him mainly they've been coming from the left-hand side. This was a corner. This is uh, it has to be put down as a miss because it's come right across the goal. Look at that. It's anticipation. Morris Ross has missed it and he's just snatched that. And he knows himself he should have put that in. It's a good corner. Yeah, that really is a good chance, actually, when you see it again, I, isn't it? Completely I think he should, be, he should be standing there, Dougie, thinking that Morris Ross is going to miss it and he'll be surprised when he does miss it. This is not so much of a chance, really, because but I, I think that this is maybe one you should be hitting with your left foot rather than trying to let the ball come across. And he's like, look, it's, it's come there. He maybe adjusts a little bit better. He gets a better shot at that. But it, it, it's say a half chance more than anything else. But it, definitely that the ball's been flashing along that Rangers goal with quite a few times. I, I do think that uh, Craig Moore, Lorenzo and Marusso have defended very well. And at times, Bonacell has done a good mm. job because he's had to defend the back post because mo most of the crosses have come from the left side. So that, that means that the big players that Celtic have peel away to the back post. So Sutton and Hartson go there and then maybe peel away from defenders. And you have to rely on your full-back in a four system being tucking in and actually going for the ball and winning it. And, and Bonacell's done that pretty well. I said before the game, that'd be vital. I only think one time I, I got to come on went past him, got the cross in. Apart from that, Bonacell has been pretty prominent in the game as well going forward. So I think he's done a good job defensively and in attack. Yes, he's, he can be pleased with his first 45 minutes in a, in a Rangers jersey, that's for sure. We talked about Mikel Arteta, Kenny, and uh, it, for me, his upper body strength is impressive. I mean, he's still a young man, he's still relatively slight, a lot of skill, but he, he's, he's strong in the tackle now, isn't he? Well, maybe he's been watching the same videos as uh, Alec gave to Bonacell to, to study <laughs> old firm games. Because he certainly is competing. Uh, anything that's come forward, he's competing. He's shows strength there against Lennon. But he's, he's cultured football as well. Um, this comes back, it's his shot at goal with his left foot. It's a great strike. Just unfortunately off target for Rangers. But this, this is a good example of, uh, of what he did after this. I mean, the shot was good. But I, I was surprised I'm Kenny and you were out as well. That just the amount of fight and determination he put in. He's an example of yeah. it. You know, and not, not something you would associate with Mikel Arteta but I think he's been getting stuck in today and he's been yeah, going and putting his foot riding in. Riding tackles and Yeah, and yeah. showing some good strength. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to hurt anybody in a tackle but he's going to, he's competing and yeah. when he wins it I tell you, he's really got the ability to put yeah. somebody in. But, but he's, he's a flair player as Stylian Petrov is, is, is for Celtic in a sense Petrov is, is Rangers Arteta or Arteta is Celtic's Petrov and, uh, and, and Stylian's been in and out of the game. Had one chance uh, which was a, was a shot at goal. Again, a half chance but... Uh, yeah, it's Stirling a kind of game that might be settled by those, isn't it? Aye, Stirling um, will get forward. It's a good lay back by Chris Sutton there. Um, Ambrose just gets out to get a block on it. But Petrov um, will get forward and score goals. Um, he's, he has got a very good shot on him. He's got a very good engine as well. Mm. And it's his responsibility to get up there, to join in with the front two, I would think, more than, than uh, Lambo or, or Lennon. Or Lennon yeah. um, I, think, I think Petrov's... Uh, a very good player and I think mm. he's the one who's been taking most of the corners and they've been dangerous corners. Yeah. Rangers, as you said, defended well, Gordon, uh, Amoruso particularly, Craig Moore, but they've, they've all done well and a couple of very good blocks towards the end of the half uh, from uh, Morris Ross uh, and uh, by Fernando Rickson and uh, they were under pressure as half-time approached. They were, I mean, mm. it's all hands to the pump, you'll see mm. that for, for Rangers, that, uh, that they're fighting very hard, mm. looks like you know that the worst they're going to hang on for, and get the point, mm. try and catch Celtic on the break as they've been doing and they just haven't quite put things together. It's a good example of it, you know, that like, players throwing themselves into, that was the shot from Petrov from before, but 
but there was a good example we had before when the shots were coming in mm. and uh, we had both Ross mm. and Rickson, you know, throwing themselves into the challenge to try and block it and, and that's happened a lot they've, they've had to have that they've had to have that determination that fight because Celtic as I say have been more in, in their mm. the final third of Rangers and pressurising them mm. and they've had, had to hold out and I, but I do think they need more from Loving Krantz. I think he's been a disappointment I know he's not been playing very much he's done well against Celtic in, in the past but today he's not quite doing it and I think you know that might be an area that Alec McLeish should be looking at maybe even bringing on likes of either Thompson for strength or Kanija to hold the ball up Mm. Yes, yeah, Lovin Grant has been disciplined. He's the kind of player that, that you've really got to play over the top to him. You can't play up and ask him to hold it, can you? No, I wouldn't have thought so. Um, mm. But most of the, the, the threat from Rangers has come down the left hand side of it. Almost nothing down the right. Um, but Lovin Grant has got a bit of pace, but where's he going to run? There's nowhere for him to run. No, hardly anybody's getting time on the ball. And if we're getting time on the mm. ball, there's mm. three, or, three or four back for, for Celtic. So he has run cleverly quite a couple of times and got. On, uh, in possession of the ball but there's not much come of it I think that you've got to admire the both sides for their, their effort and their commitment I mean without that effort and commitment it shows you how much it means to both sets of players Absolutely. neither wants to lose but if Rangers walk away with it Klaus losing a goal it'll be the first time in his old, old firm career that's right he's never kept a clean sheet he has at the moment 0-0 half time at Celtic Park back for the second 45 very shortly but of course uh, we can uh, take the moment uh, now just to look ahead to this afternoon's other Bank of Scotland Premier League matches and indeed in the Bells Leagues as well let's look ahead to the, the entertainment coming up later in the afternoon Dundee can consolidate their place in the top six today although the influential Georgian Nemsadze may miss out Fourth place Kelly are also in decent form and Stevie Fulton will return at Dens Park. Livingston are only three points off the bottom. Barry Wilson and Dave Bingham will miss out today against Hearts who will stay third whatever happens at the City Stadium in what you could just about call a local derby. Motherwell's talented youngsters are winning plenty of friends and will certainly fancy their chances of three points at Fir Park against struggling Aberdeen. Steve Patterson didn't allow his squad a day off this week and they can't afford to take one today. Dunfermline will be boosted by their midweek cup win but they need to start collecting league points again. They've won just one of their last five league games. And that's an identical record to Partick Thistle who have won just twice away. The record books are in the home side's favour even if someone other than Alex Burns has finally scored for Thistle. Don't look for too much pretty football at Easter Road. Bobby Williamson's side have lost five in a row to drop out of the top six. And they badly need to take something against bottom of the table Dundee United, who haven't scored in their last five away matches, but will be encouraged by last week's win over Dunfermline. In Division 1, Falkirk should be good for three points against struggling Alawa. St Johnson should keep the pressure on the Bairns with a win over bottom of the table are Broth, while Inverness will be seeking revenge in the derby at Ross County. It's top against bottom in Division 2. Wraith Rovers now 11 points clear and they should certainly expect three points against Cowden Beath. But the Stranraer Stennis Muir match is off the pitch at Stair Park as waterlogged. East Five have a seven point lead in Division 3. They'll travel to Montrose today with confidence, while Peter Head's recent excellent form should see them through against Elgin. And Albion Rovers too should maintain their promotion push against Gretna. And, of course, we'll have uh, all the latest for you in the course of the afternoon. But uh, with some excellent goals, as always, in February in the Bank of Scotland Premier League and a panel of experts, well, not all experts, because I was on it, decided that this was the best of the bunch. Steve Tosh's fine goal for Aberdeen at Ibrox. Steve Tosh, recent signing, of course, for the Dons, who haven't had the greatest of months, but this was a moment to save us. Steve Tosh, great skill to score against Rangers and Susan Gardner is our winner of the Goal of the Month prize. She's from Inverkeething, she's a Dunfermline fan, so Susan will be spoilt rotten with all the pre-match entertainment at a game very soon at East End Park. And while we're on the subject of uh, competitions, don't forget that we've got some excellent prizes on offer, of course, in the Man of the Match competition, a mobile phone with picture messaging. Together with uh, the Man of the Match today's shirt and the Bank of Scotland supporters kit, give us a call and uh, cast your vote. 0900 10 200 25 for this afternoon's Man of the Match. Right, let's look to the second 45 coming up at Celtic Park. Goalless in the first half. Uh, do you see changes, Gordon? I think that one change I would say maybe is Loving Krantz coming off if he doesn't improve. Not right away, but I can see the Rangers making a change. Yeah, Celtic, they've already made a change with Silla coming on. I don't see them making any more changes at the moment because I think they're in control 
of the game for the most part, so I don't see many changes from them. It's just got the, the smell so far, Kenny, of a one-goal win for someone, doesn't it? I don't think it's going to be 3-2 or 2 each now. No, and at the moment you think it would be Celtic and you would think it would be from a set play. Um, but, I mean, the first two games have been so good, so exciting, mm. lots of goals. But this one is, they're equally as competitive and, uh, and committed to the cause, but, I mean, if it is 1-0, I hope it's just somebody that scores with a bit of skill rather than somebody makes a mistake, because if you make a mistake in an old firm game, it's... It's a long way back for you. Certainly. But, but your hunch is still that Celtic might just come through this one. Yeah. Um, as I say, maybe low well, averages goes against me when Klaus hasn't he? Mm. Kept the clean sheet for 15 games. But I would think I, th I think Celtic, I think from a, from a set play, would be their best route. Mm. I think they've pushed forward in the second part of the first half there. Um, I think they've put Rangers under pressure, as you said, yourself. And I think really it's, it's got to tell some time or other. They don't look too threatening up front. And if they can keep concentrating defensively, then I think they've got a threat up front. I think well, my it's, been all, it's been all muscle and effort and good defending so far. More of the same to come. Let's go back to Celtic Park. Teams just coming out, as you can see. Let's rejoin Sandy and Rob. Thanks, Diggy. Celtic hearing through a mad march in the next fortnight. From today, Rangers Liverpool, Rangers Liverpool in three different competitions. And also coming up this month later on for them, the quarter-finals of the Tenants Scottish Cup. So, while nothing might be settled, apart from that uh, CIS Cup final, of course, uh, we'll get a significant guide in the next few weeks as to how many trophies, if any, Celtic can land this season. Can they get the goal they desperately want in the second half here? That's where their focus is at the moment. They badly want to win this one and get themselves three points behind Rangers with a, a game in hand, and then it really is game on against Alec McLeish's Rangers. Celtic have to go for it, no question about that. I feel I just can't help thinking they have to win this match if they're going to hold on to the championship. And they've got 45 minutes at home to try and do that, and I'm sure they'll give it everything they've got, but they're against a very, very determined and solid Rangers team, especially the way they're defending today. Very few goal-scoring chances so far in this match, as discussed by Kenny and Gordon during the half-time interval. John Hartson gets himself away from Lorenzo Amoruso for once. Mialbi. Up went Chris Sutton. And again, it's Amoruso, a one-man barrier at the time. At times in the way. Great defender again, Chris Sutton. Up like a bird really in beating Craig Muir in the air, it's a marvellous header, but I've also read it well. Valharan's long throw, flipped off the head of Morris Ross. Now Thompson's cross. And Neil McCann did well to get himself up off the ground and ensure Momo Sila couldn't divert the ball back into the box. Good play from Alan Thompson, decent ball in again. Momo Sila getting there late. But he'll just couldn't get his head round it enough to keep the ball in the game. Ferguson's pass picks out Rickson. And Ross. Fernando Rickson again against Paul Lambert. That'll be a good tussle, these two. It's been an interesting battle, to say the least. Paul Lambert's experience, I think, counts for an awful lot. You see it there, just watching the ball keep his eye on Rickson 1 0 up in yellow cards. Ross Cross, headed away by Lambert. His opposite number, Barry Ferguson. Opens play out, finds Jerome Bonitel. Neil McCann shapes for the cross. The big figure of Johan Mialbe was in the way. Good defend from Mialbe, but I felt there Neil McCann could have had a go at Mialbe. First time was a little bit of space, could have tried to take the big defender for pace, but I like him to try and play, play the cross. Avalanza, Arteta. Good play by Avalanta. Time for McCann. Tried to play it back for Arteta. Lauren Kranz had have a chance to have a crack at goal. Free kick. I think you'll find it's against Fernando Rickson again inside the Celtic box. Good play from Rangers. Good ball in. Lauren Kranz peeling off, almost getting there. And you'll just watch Fernando Rickson late again with the challenge. This was a clever cutback, wasn't it, from Neil McCann? Shaped across, then pulled it back. It wasn't far from Mikel Arteta. And in the end, Lovenkrantz was charged down. It's the type of ball Rangers have to play in the box. They don't have a big striker, somebody that can win the ball in the air. The big Celtic defenders will always win the 50-50s, so they've got to look for the alternative. That's 
Baldi forcing it clear again. Jerome Bonacell. Neil McCann. Rangers obviously, obviously lack something. Sandy without Ronald De Boer, he's subtle, he's got lots of promptings, good vision, and he can also hold the ball up for them. He's a big miss when you see that uh, the way that uh, Lovin Kranz is playing through the middle. As Kenny was saying at half time, there's no space to play in. You maybe need somebody that's just a little bit better back to goal to hold the ball up. Bonacell heading in the wrong direction, but it's his throw. It's a good challenge again between the two of them, isn't it? And that, you know, that kind of situation is happening all over the field. It's one v ones and every player determined to win their individual battle. Almost seen up the first half swap for Didier Agat, who has hamstring trouble. We don't know yet how serious it is. Still in Petrov, trying to lay it off for Sila. Melby into Hartson, prodded away by Amaruso. Lamberts. An awkward bouncing ball for Amaruso. And a corner kick that is the positive result of Chris Sutton's pressure. It's a great play from Chris Sutton. It's a 50 50 ball here. Amaruso trying to gauge it out. But Sutton, he's not hanging about. He's not giving him any respect. He's determined to win the ball and forced Amaruso into giving away the corner kick. Five inside the penalty box for Alan Thompson. Good delivery for John Hartson. What a miss. What a chance. You think it was in the mouth there, Rob. What a chance. John Hartson's a free header, six yards out. Morisos has lost him, and he can't believe it himself. Look how close he is. If this guy say good morning, knock it down the way, and it's in the back of the net. Try to get it into the corner. So one early in the first half, one early in the second half. Two chances for John Hartson. Two, you would expect a finisher of this quality to have stuck in the back of the net. He knows that himself. This time, Hartson foiled by Amaruso. Got himself in the way as Hartson turned. Worrying for Rangers about the lack of marking on Hartson there, Sandy. Yes, yeah, Morris Ross could drive just that yard forward. Hartson managed to, to pull off him and get the, the header. Certainly, he should have scored, certainly not on target. But set pieces are so important to Celtic. They're so much bigger, so much more powerful in the air. It's an area where they're, I'm sure they're determined to try and take advantage of. Thompson, good pass. Perfect for Petrov. And the defending wasn't bad either again from Amaruso. Amaruso's played well today and he's had to. It's a great break from Petrov there. Amaruso watched the run, covered the run, managed to block the ball across goal. Celtic bid to keep the pressure on. Petrov's delivery, headed away by Morris Ross. Bobo Baldi tries to get this back in. Silas cross. Hesitation, and it's through for Petrov. Shooting chance for Stylian Petrov, and a good block by Shota Avalante. Good spell from Celtic, putting a lot of pressure on Rangers now. I think this is the third corner kick in Oro. Petrov there, forcing the play again, and Avalante back defending, knocking it out to the corner. That'll be one of various threats to Rangers here. And McCann's clearance. Back it comes from Lennon. John Hobson's there and onside. Forced away by Craig Moore. He's unlucky there, Hobson. It's a good header in from Neil Lennon. You see John Hobson staying onside from the Lennon header. That space, good first touch, but Craig Moore put him under a lot of pressure and eventually made the clearance. And Russo got himself above Hartson. Thompson shot, swerving away off target, but it's a period of concerted Celtic pressure, this. It is, and it's Barry Ferguson that makes a mistake this time. It's a poor ball across his own 18-yard box, we'll see here. He's not under pressure, Alan Thompson. On to that shot. Unfortunately, the shot wasn't too good. I wonder if this man had been on the pitch, if Celtic would have been in front by now. Henrik Larsson, 34 goals already this season, recovering from a double jaw fracture, but he's back in training. 
and he's not too far away from playing. Neat from Sutton, and that was neat from Ross as well. That's a great play again from Morris Ross. He plays that position so well, he tucks in when necessary beside the central defenders to sweep up clear any danger. He read that one exceptionally well. And Kevin Muscat has to accept the inevitable when Morris Ross is fit. He's in, Muscat's out. It's happened several times before this season. Well, it, leaving no one in any doubt as to who was going to win that one. Celtic have actually defended very well as well, wouldn't have had to. The pace in McCann and Robbie Kranz can cause anybody problems, but they've handled it well so far. Mikel Arteta, it's a great run into the area, but he's overrun it. It's a good break from Arteta. You can see the qualities he breaks forward here. He's determined, getting there first, driving forward. Could have passed it there to Robbie Kranz. Elected to try to beat the last man. Just picked the wrong option, too much weight in the last touch. Alec McLeish frustrated again. Let's hear from Jack. Alec McLeish is thinking about making a change, no doubt about it. Just in a word with Claudio Canigia and Stevie Thompson, told him to go and get warmed up, and certainly one, if not both, will be introduced very shortly. My tip is that Canigia might be first up. Scored eight times already this season, Claudio Canigia, from about ten starts. He's been a permanent fixture on the subs bench. He could do some damage and he could add to the pace which Rangers already possess up front. And you would imagine it might well be one crowd who will, will give way. I would think so, Rob. The, the problem Rangers have at the moment, they can't keep the ball in the Celtic half. Celtic keep running it back, they need somebody to play back to goal, to hold the ball up, to give the defence a bit of respite. And Canidia, for me, is perfect for that. Celtic have been coming at Rangers in waves in the last few minutes. Second stretching over the pass there from Hartson. Rangers looking for some composure, looking for a finish as well. And here's a man who's finished before against Celtic. Lovinkrantz, good effort on target, but it was always a difficult angle from which to score. Good play from Rangers, good build-up between Ferguson and Arteta. Arteta picking the pass, good run for Lovinkrantz to stay on side. No options here, Rob, nobody to pass it to. Only chance was a shot at goal, very tight angle, and that Douglas was more than up to it. Peter Lovingrantz, of course, who scored five times last season against Celtic, including his two in the Scottish Cup final, one of them the winner against Celtic. Almost a, a lucky charm for the Ibrox team. Sutton claims obstruction against Craig Moore, waved away by Mike McCurry. I don't think it was much in that, to be honest with you. I think maybe the concern for Alec McLeish, Rob, is that Tim Loving Kranz had that chance here. He was well forward, but there was no Rangers player anywhere near him. They have to get more bodies forward if they're going to try and score a goal. Exertion will play its part as this match goes on. You would expect one or two mistakes to be forthcoming. It's high energy, it's high pressure, high tension. That's what this match is all about. Neil McCann loses it to Johan Yalvi. Lambert gets past McCann, doesn't get past Rickson. And another little flare up between the two. Now Rangers have a promising looking attack with Arteta. Great challenge from Valhalla, which stopped his progress. And now it's the Celtic counter attack with Alan Thompson. Played in for Chris Sutton, knocks it down for John Hudson! into the second half, John Hartson fires Celtic in front, his 23rd goal of the season, and it was coming, it's a magnificent goal, Mikel Arteta will be disappointed, he gave the ball away, the ball away early, but there's no question, Hartson's ability, quality, composure, great head from Chris Sutton, but John Hartson, he's missed three chances, it's all about being a good striker, don't lose your confidence, and just watch his great touch, Knows exactly what he's doing, and wow, there's no way he's stepping close, he's getting anywhere near this. Brilliant as well from Sutton with a knockdown, it was one against two for him, but he won the header, he won the knockdown, and that had DeMartin O'Neill on his feet as John Hartson buried the right foot volley. 
How many times have we said it? He's a good finisher, he's an experienced player. He's so vital for this team without Henrik Larsson. And how important can that goal be? And also it's a sign of a good striker who misses a couple of good chances as he did earlier in the game. But his confidence unaffected as he lashed that one home. He scored in the 3-2 defeat to Rangers earlier on in December. But he'll be hoping his goal this time is in his, as part of a winning team. Well, it's a vital goal. The first goal was almost going to be vital today. Celtic, you've got to say, they've, got to, they've deserved it. On the basis of play in the second, uh, they start the second half. The one went after a finish, he knows exactly what he's about there. No messing about. Just smack it in the back of the net. Unstoppable was what that was from Hartson. And uh, well, he can forget all about the misses now. That's a scorer. And Celtic will look to add to it. Valdez free kick. Sutton the target, Sutton with a knockdown. You're a disappointed man. The, the, the fact that the, the time of the Celtic goal from Rangers' point of view wasn't good, but it was one of their best attacks. Arteta had got lots of space going forward, should have played the pass, lots of bodies up the side of him, and Rangers get caught with a sucker punch. Sutton to Lambert. Stretching out to receive the pass was still in Petrov. Lambert left grounded after he played the ball away. And he's holding his face, and that must be worth another look. I think it might be Craig Moore that's involved in the challenge. Paul Lambert is certainly a sore one. He doesn't get down without cause, without reason. You see here Craig Moore, he's late, and it's a shoulder right into the upper body, at the least, uh, of Paul Lambert. Lucky man, Craig Moore, Mike McCurry had seen that, even his second yellow. And the thing is, Sonny, it's not just Mike McCurry, he's got two assistant referees as well, who, and you would think that the assistant might well have spotted that one down the touchline as uh, Moore obstructed Lambert, and you don't wish anyone a red card, but uh, you would reckon that that's what should have happened there for Craig Moore. It certainly was, I think the fact that it was so late, Rob, I think play had moved on, the officials, I'm sure, were watching the ball, it was that late, and Craig Moore eventually made target with Paul, made contact, sorry, with Paul Lambert. So Craig Moore is a lucky man to be still on the pitch, booked earlier on, and you would have to think should have been booked there as well. At this moment in time, Rangers need composure, they need to settle down, try and get the ball back, try and play, play passes. Petrov, Sutton, Hartson almost got it under control. Rickson plays a wild pass away, and that doesn't help his team. That's the problem, they have to keep the ball. That was a simple pass, Rickson, well in control, lots of time, trying to find, find Neil McCann, but it was just a poor ball. That's what you're talking about, Sandy, it needs calmness, it needs composure, it's only one goal against. Yep, Rangers have fought back before, remember them being 3-2 down here in this fixture there on the season. And we're also pressured all the way there by Chris Sutton. He is an example to everyone around him, Chris Sutton, in the amount of effort and energy he expends and uses his brain as well. That's Valharan's header, and heading out. Jos Valharan played a big part in that Celtic goal because of he who won the tackle against Mikel Arteta midway inside his own half and started the Celtic attack, which brought about the Hearts and goal. Ferguson squares it to Arteta. And Bonicel, a pacey pass which Neil McCann couldn't catch. And errors beginning to creep in for Rangers at a time when they want to hit back. There's a lack of belief about them at the moment. The goal certainly stunned them. They're losing their composure, they're not passing the ball nearly as well as they were earlier in the game. And it's all about that goal from John Harrison. He's created the problem for, for Alan McLeish and Andy Watson. Jan Volter's there. I'm pretty certain there'll be a substitution fairly soon. I still think Claudia Kanidja is the one that can hold on to the ball to provide that lot of spark for them. Three serious faces there, McLeish, Watson and Bouters. Wondering what they can do to change the flow. As Peter Lovenkrantz dumps Alan Thompson over the touchline. And Martin O'Neill was just a couple of yards away to register his disapproval. It's a solid talisman for Lovenkrantz. That's the type of thing, if you're winning the game, Celtic are in front now. They're delighted to see that happen. Rangers have just lost the, the place at this moment in time. They've got to concentrate on getting the ball back and playing football if they're going to have any chance of getting back in the game. 
Lambert's free kick, aimed at Sutton, off Amoruso, out comes Kloss. Still the best part of half an hour left at Celtic Park, it's not over by any manner of means. Now, there's no question, Rangers, they have the quality within their team to get back in this game. The Celtic in this moment in time, well in control. That was good teaming up from Celtic against McCann. Momo Sila helping out Julian Petrov on that far touch line. It's all about what we Rob. Start the second half, Celtic have picked the game up. Just, just been that little bit more determined to get there to win the game. It's more important for them to win the game than it is for Rangers to win it. And it's shown in the play in the start of the second half. Of course, if this scoreline turns into a final scoreline, then the title race is blown wide open. If Celtic win, it means it's a three-point difference with a game in hand. And just as we thought from early season, this could go down right to the wire. They certainly you know, it looks that way. They're so far in front of every other team in the league. And we're getting towards the closing stages now. You can't see anybody else taking points off these two now. Too much at stake. Although, in recent times, there have been a lot of narrow victories for both these teams. And you just wonder whether a trip to Fair Park and a rescheduled match might just be problematic. I don't think there are any easy points when you're trying to win a title, either. No, they're not, but uh, the quality is within most of these two teams. When you get to this stage of the season, points are so important, so vital. Craig Moore attacking the ball. Rangers throw, Barry Ferguson in a hurry to get on with it. Rangers are almost certain to think about Kinesia or Thompson before too much longer, you would imagine. Stephen Thompson would certainly offer them something different if they can get the service into him. Yeah, he's strong and he's powerful, but I, I can't help feeling he's not as good back to goal as Kinesia is, Rob. He's not going to trick it of Kinesia. As I said before, Rangers at this moment in time, they, they can't hold the ball up the front line. And I think Kinesia is ideal for doing that for them. There are the two of them together. Stephen Thompson with just three subs appearances so far. He has got his first goal. John Hartson wins a free kick. Given against Boris Ross. Made too many tricks in his boot there for the youngster. That's the play from Hartson. The speed strong, holding the ball up, not letting Boris Ross anywhere near him forcing the youngster into pulling them more than anything else to give away the free kick in a very dangerous area. It's the Premier League leaders against the UEFA Cup quarter-finalists. I'm not one to gloat, but it is Stephen Thompson who's going to be coming on shortly as a Rangers replacement. Celtic with a, an inviting set-piece. So then Petrov lining up for the crack at goal. It's Petrov off the wall, corner kick, and that could mean more problems for Rangers. Simple free kick, but effective. Just a touch of the ball, touch to the side, Petrov. Only one thought in his mind. Palmer into the wall, look for maybe a deflection. He got his deflection, got the corner kick. Five in the area for Petrov. And a good take from Stefan Klaus, although no great challenge on him. Easy work for the goalkeeper that time. Unusual, there's so many big bodies in there. Stefan Kloss hasn't been allowed to come for any of the earlier set pieces. On a sell to McCann. Ferguson to Ross, it's a late one from John Hartson. Credit to Boris Ross, didn't make an awful lot of it. That's a free kick. Given against Arbalatze, and his challenge on Valde, which didn't look too threatening. But let's find out who's coming off as Stephen Thompson comes on from Czech. Well, perhaps surprisingly, it's Bonnie Sell that's coming on, so there's obviously a major tactical rethink. Stevie Thompson is this in a word or two with Alex McLeish. I think uh, and shortly we will see Kanija come on as well. But Bonnie Sell is the man who's coming off first, Rob, so a major tactical rethink for Rangers, obviously. Well, we talked about Celtic going for it, as they had to do in this match. They will feel they have to win, or they desperately want to win. And uh, now Rangers looking to salvage something from Celtic Park, replace 
the left back Bonicel with striker Thompson. Interesting to say the least. I think Neil McCann said at this moment in time he's going to the left back position. The loving Kranz going wide left hand side. And Stephen Thompson, he'll play through the middle. Sutton keeps the ball so effectively. Thompson on his right foot into the feet of Petrov. Came off Sutton. And Neil Lennon! He's scored twice in 101 starts. It was nearly a momentous number three. It should have been number three. What an opportunity. Timed it well, made good contact with the ball, but didn't get on target. Good play again for himself to go forward. They look so dangerous at the moment, and that was a chance. A little bit of credit, though, to Craig Moore, who got across very quickly, and uh, Lennon could undoubtedly see him out of the corner of his eye as he struck that half volley. But it was a real opportunity to put Celtic two ahead. Valanza against Valhara, the Georgian against the Belgian. Thompson finds Sata. Ferguson and Moore both sailed into the challenge. I think McCurry is not too happy with Barry Ferguson, but I tell you what, Craig Moore makes contact here as well. The two of them run about Chris Sun. But just at this moment in time, Rangers can't win the 50-50, Celtic are winning the battles all over the field. And that's why they're totally, at this moment in time, controlling the match. But it's the way Craig Moore plays. Can't take that physical side out of his game. Claudio Canizia is about to be brought on as well for Rangers. Thompson's free kick. And no challenge again on Kloss. Too close to the goalkeeper that time from Thompson. Don't forget the man of the match competition. We're running out of time, if you want to take part, let us know who you think the top player will be. When Sandy makes his choice later on, 0900 10 225. You can win a state-of-the-art mobile phone, complete with picture messaging. Can you afford to be without one? Neil McCann, Peter Lovengratz, giving away. Neil Lennon, John Hartson. And Momo Sina. It's what Celtic have uh, done so well in the second half, isn't it? Keep the ball when they have it, and that's what Rangers, for the large part of it, have been unable to do. That's what it's all about. They've got to have possession of the ball to create chances to score goals. And Celtic have certainly dominated in that area. But they've also worked so hard, Rob. They haven't allowed Rangers to play. Rangers normally try to play the close, short passing game. The Celtic have made that so difficult for them today. And that man there, John Hampson, he's been a difference so far. Missed two chances, the number three was stuck in the back of the net. Good strikers don't worry about missed chances, they just make sure that when the next one comes along it's rattled in, that's exactly what happened there for the Welsh international striker. Momo Sila against Neil McCann. It's good defending from McCann, and with Rickson. Avalanza heads it back. Ross had more time than he used. Up goes Stephen Thompson. Peter Lovenkrantz is going to be the player to give way when Rangers make the next change. Neil Lennon to John Hartson. Chris Sutton, first touch, let him down. Otherwise, surely he would have scored a second. Great pass and movement from Celtic there. Neil Lennon. Doing what he does very well, winning the battles in the middle of the pass. Look, this is a good pass to John Hartson. Tried to slip Sutton in, and Chris's first touch wasn't the best. Tried to knock on his left foot, didn't, couldn't quite get there. You see it there, just misjudging that a little bit. But doing enough to win the corner. What a great challenge from Barry Ferguson to force the ball away, and he's furious with his teammates for losing out in the physical battle. A tenth Celtic corner of the match, headed away by Ferguson. Rangers haven't had one yet. Lofted back in by Lambert, Mialbi's there, Sutton, off Amoruso, and it's corner number 11. Good, good play again from the big striker. It'd be easy just to fire that ball anywhere, but he knew exactly what he was doing. Rangers changing their mind about the substitution. We hear it's going to be Mikel Arteta, who will come off now for Kinesia instead of Lovenkrantz. That's still to happen. 
Celtic looking for a second goal. John Hartson's in there. And it was foot behind again. It's another corner kick. Came off Morris Ross, I think. Flicked off his head and behind. That's good defending from Morris Ross. It's a handful, John Hartson. Hard one for, for Morris Ross to handle him. He's so strong in there. The pressure just won't go away for Rangers. Close punched off the head of Stephen Thompson. He just about got a fist he wasn't fancying. <laughs> Great deal of confusion down there, Check as to who was about to come off, but it's clearly Arteta, not Lovenkrantz. Yeah, there's Michael Arteta now, who is the man that's coming on. Alex McLeish and Andy Watson actually informed John Robot of the fourth official that it was going to be a loving kind of substitute. Then they went back with a change of mind. Well, Paul Pimmer, they slipped the fourth official, they changed their mind, changed the piece of paper. And as you see, it's Michael Arteta off and Claudia Kinija on. Youngster off, veteran on, the 36 year old Argentinian who's been there, done it, got the t shirt. It's an interesting change from Rangers. I'm not sure what Alec will do tactically at this moment in time. Arbaladza maybe into the midfield area. Looks a bit like it. Barry Ferguson trying to drive his team on. Looking to lead a salvage mission with Rangers one goal down. And he's just stumbled under the challenge of Alan Thompson. Free kick. Talking of big games, how do you fancy Anfield? Liverpool against Celtic, the decider in the UEFA Cup, a week on Thursday. It's on BBC Scotland. I don't know why it's surprising my voice, we've seen so many big games from us this season, and that's the latest one. Stephen Thompson trying to play his part in this big game. But he's going to struggle against the likes of Baldi and Mialbi and Valhadden. Struggle to make an impact. Neil in the driving seat, 1-0 up, and uh, looking to hit back and reverse this recent trend of old-firm results with three wins and three draws for Rangers under Alec McLeish. Can Celtic bounce back here and get themselves right back into the championship race? And Celtic, of course, still involved in four competitions, the final of the CIS Cup, the quarter-finals of the Scottish Cup, the title, of course, and the UEFA Cup last eight. So many prizes up for grabs. It's potentially a massive end of the season for Celtic. Involved in everything. Lennon's free kick. Deceived his teammates. Paul Lambert. Runs and runs and runs. Ferguson hemmed into a corner. Uh, Lambert and Sutton. Great determin determination again from the Celtic players there, Lambert Sutton it was. Pegged Rangers in the corner, weren't given the, the cause up. He's played well today. Well, like a 20 year old and a 30 something year old. Short corner from Petrov, in from Thompson, Hartson there, Mialby there, and importantly for Rangers, Neil McCann there. It's time for Lorenzo, I think, to lead the charge as he sees it. It was a poor pass, though, as is that from Bobo Baldi. Stephen Thompson has peeled out to the left-hand side. And he's easily snuffed out by Momo Silla. He should have passed it, though. Looks have made a good run down the left-hand side. Thompson should have passed it in there. He's made another good run as Fernando Rickson. He was held back by Silla. Grabbed his arm on the way past, and that's a free kick. I tell you, Rob, it's a free kick, there's no question about it. What a position Fernando Rickson's in here. I don't think he has to go down. I think he can hit the dead ball line, take advantage of the play, and it may be a real opportunity for Rangers. So instead of the run to the byline, it's the set piece. Seven blue shirts in the box for Barry Ferguson, but... It's the head of Neil Lennon which powers it clear. Back in from Ross. Great control from Ferguson. Here's Morris Ross. Neil McCann. Celtic defending in numbers. That's a poor pass from Ross, which sets up Alan Thompson. 
stopped by Rickson. You should have passed it again, Rob. Two in a row, one for Rangers, one for Celtic. Still in pitch off, it got beyond the, the Rangers defenders on his right-hand side. Alan Thompson didn't look, I didn't want to look one of the two. And that was a chance. But it had to be an early pass, and by the time Thompson wanted to play it, pitch off was marked. John Hartson has given it away, it's his turn. Ross to Thompson, against Valharan. And, wow, Rangers have their first corner kick of the match, 12 minutes from time. That sums up the game so far, a good play from Stephen Thompson. Trying to take on Valharan down the right-hand side and managed to do enough to win the corner. The sort of run which had brought about Rangers' goal in the Henrik Scottish Cup. Last round at Somerset Park, where he set up Ronald De Boer with a cross from just that position. Every Celtic player inside, almost the six-yard box at the moment. Neil McCann, Wallace Ross, Andy Ferguson chips it up. First there was Silla. That was Rickson, but his header only sets up Paul Lambert. And Celtic have a real chance to make this safe. It's Chris Sutton. It's Paul Lambert, and he's missed it. Anguish written all over Paul Lambert's face. That was the moment Rangers could have been closed out. It should have been, no question. Every Rangers player caught forward for the set piece, and Paul Lambert eventually picking up the ball. Picks the right option, that's an intelligent pass. Keeps himself on side, and just a little bit heavy there from Chris Sutton. Otherwise, Lambert would have stuck that in the back of the net to finish the game. That's the way it's going to be now. Rangers have to have a goal going forward. And as they do that, they're going to leave lots of gaps at the back. It was Rickson's header which set up that Celtic attack. That's good play from Momo Sela. And uh, Rob Douglas wanted to grab it, but Momo Baldy wasn't having it. <laughs> it was Rose Ed almost, wasn't it? Just get it out the road, get it up the park. And they're winning 1 0. Who's to say that's wrong? 80 minutes played in the third Old Firm game of the season. 1-0 Celtic, John Hartson's goal. Live from BBC Scotland. All the thrills and spills we've come to expect in this always momentous fixture. And I have a feeling we're not finished yet. Momo Silla against Lorenzo Amoruso. He's overrun at Silla. Back goes Barry Ferguson, plugging the gaps, playing the captain's part to perfection. There's a massive gap, Rob, in the Rangers' left-back position now. Celtic are trying to play in that area all the time. Neil McCann supposedly playing there, but obviously trying to push forward to get back in the game. But there's real chances for Celtic to, to take advantage of the, the hole that's left by that man. Alec McLeish has pressed the gamble button. He feels he has to. Rangers currently in a losing position. Rickson's pass. It's going a lot of Morris Ross. He won't catch it. And... The passing, from a Rangers' viewpoint, is not good enough. It's not been good today, and that's unusual. We said they are very much a passing team. Well, unsung heroes, Jos Valharan might get the prize here this Saturday lunchtime, because look at that challenge on Mikel Arteta, which won possession for Celtic. It started off the attack through Lambert to Alan Thompson. He chipped it over the top for Chris Sutton. The knockdown, the volley, 1-0. And gets the glory for the goal, and justly so. But uh, what a part played in that by Osman Harden. John Hartson was playing basketball there. <laughs> that was a tired one from Hartson. He certainly worked hard. Ganesha gets himself away from Baldi. Neil Lennon doing some good covering work. Barry Ferguson, Momosila there, Petrov hoists it downfield. It's not a great threat to Craig Moore, but it does get the ball out of Celtic territory. It's countdown time. Rickson to Arvaladze. Good shot. It's been a while for Rangers. It has, good play from Shota Valadza here. Good first touch on his left foot, 
and a decent shot on target. And Lovin Kranz, he was in there, and Toffee Rabda was just watching for any mistakes with the big goalkeeper. The good safe hands. If you're wondering where Bert Konterman's been recently, he is on the bench this afternoon. He's about to come on. He started only four matches all season, but he's about to see the closing minutes of this old firm match. Tunisia have been given no time on the ball by Neil Lennon. It's possession well won for Celtic. Sutton against Amoruso. Played that in, hopefully, for Hartson. Let's hear from Chick. All sorts of activity down here, Rob. Uh, Bert Conteman is coming on. Morris Ross is coming off for Rangers. That's the last switch for them. And Celtic 2 will make a change. Jackie McNamara will be introduced into the action. Not quite sure it's coming off yet, Rob, but that'll be confirmed in just a second. So, Morris Ross off. He's done well. Another good performance from the 21-year-old defender. And it's uh, Bert Conteman suddenly into the glare. Of this old farm match. Stylian Petrov off for Celtic and Jackie McNamara will make his 25th appearance in the old farm fixture. So, bags of experience of this game from McNamara. Big successful move from Martin O'Neill, he's just trying to make the midfield more solid as far as Celtic are concerned. Petrov always wanting to go forward. I think you'll find that Jackie will generally just sit. The first thing McNamara did was win possession in the midfield. He started the Celtic attack and now gets it back from Chris Sutton. Doing exactly what Martin O'Neill wanted him to do when he brought them on, won the ball and now he's won a free kick. No questions, a free kick. Neil McCann certainly not agreeing. He's attacking from the back. Jackie McNamara showed lots of experience protecting the ball and you can't do that. It's attacking from the back and a barge in his back. And he's the one for the referee to get the free kick. And a yellow card for Neil McCann as well, maybe for the arguing which followed the foul. Frustration, I think it is, Rob, you would call it from McCann's point of view. But the referee's not going to change his mind. Never seen a referee changing his mind yet. So another entry in Mike McCurry's book in his first all four match. I've got to say, Rob, he's played well today, Mike McCurry. He's had a decent game, lots of pressure on him. But I think all the major decisions, all the important ones, he's got them all right. Yeah, you can be happy with us so far. I stress so far. <laughs> Five minutes left, plus a little bit of stoppage time. Alan Thompson's free kick, giving it too much. Beyond everyone. But the Cel the Celtic at this stage happy to keep what they have. Yeah, most of them rob there that Bilhar and Baldi. Uh, and the Albi all stayed back. Stephen Thompson gets a good pass away for Fernando Rickson. Well. Bobovalde sprinted from about 30 yards away and made sure that that was going to be his. He wasn't going to be second best, was he? That's a magnificent tackle. Had to get there, had to time it right, and got it to perfection. It's a fearsome sight. Neil McCann's corner kick, and what a waste. With just a few minutes left and Rangers one down, you would have to say that's criminal. That sums up Rangers' day, doesn't it? No real belief. No real quality about the ball in the box, and really not a lot going right for him at this moment in time. And if he's fortunate, it's Neil McCann, he'll keep away from his manager at this moment, because uh, Alec McLeish, well aware that there's so little time left, really wants to ask questions of Celtic at this stage. And a uh, corner kick onto the top of the net asks nothing. No, the real quality that we know Rangers have, it certainly hasn't shown through today, and I can't, I can't help feeling that Ronald De Boer being out has been a massive factor in this match. We spoke at the top about how scarily similar these two have their league records this season and that uh, they'll be identical if Celtic win this and it'll be one all from win each added to those slip-ups at Motherwell, Kilmarnock and Aberdeen and it will really be game on for the title. Amaruso lost it in for Stephen Thompson got his head to it, Colin Crouch trying to pick up the pieces Baldi hoisted it away he just won it wrong, if I was Mark Daniel, you know, his team's sitting back just that little bit at the moment, quite happy to try and defend this lead. The last time we seen that was in Stuttgart, and they paid the price late in the game. Craig Moore, and the shot at Adelaide, leaves it to Claudio Canizia. Good challenge from Jackie McNamara. Moore prompting again, 
Balde wins it. And Contraman to McCann. Can Rangers unlock the door? Uh, surely the free kick. For Valharan's challenge on Arvaladze. Fleet of foot from the Georgian. And Valharan was committed to the challenge. It's all Rangers at the moment, Rob. They're sent in the sentence saying that, uh, that surprised me a little bit. Celtic are letting them off the hook by defending the way they are at the moment. Rob Douglas so far unbeaten. Is he going to be tested here? That's the range. Lorenzo Amoruso building up to have a strike at goal. Nearly 89 minutes played. Amoruso! It's a great hit and a terrific save from Douglas. Back it comes from Moore, but that's heading out. Amoruso denied by Douglas. Good save from the big goalkeeper. It's a fabulous hit. Lots of power, lots of pace on the ball, beyond the wall. They give the goalkeeper credit. He gets his wall right, he gets his angles right, he's in the right position and makes the save. He got good solid hands behind this, Rob Douglas, because it was hit with a lot of power. And he just made sure he wasn't going to make a mistake with that. And he battered it to safety. He also looked Rob the fact that he knocked it maybe 15, 20 yards away from goal. That wasn't dropped down about his feet. Another clash between Chris Sutton and Barry Ferguson. Craig Moore involved again there. Ninety minutes are up. Now into two minutes of time added on. Can still take hold out. John Hartson's goal separates these two deadly rivals. And that's a way, surely. Too much on the pass from Neil McCann, and even the searing pace of Peter Lovecraft. Wouldn't catch that one. One of the match. There's been a few contenders of lots of good players, but I tell you what, that man there, Chris Son, he's my top man today. He's caused Rangers all sorts of problems up front, battled away, played with experience, with Gale, with awareness, and with a real good attitude to win the game. And his header, saying I'm John Hartson, that clinched it for me. He's not back to score man of the match. Hartson gets the goal, Sutton gets the man of the match, Nord. So if you voted for him as well, you could win that state of the art camera with uh, tele mess mobile, I should say, mobile, I should say, with tele messaging. It's either a camera you can phone on, or a phone you can take pictures on, it's one of the two. Arbeladze chasing what looks at the moment to be a lost cause. And it's Celtic who get the nod on the decision. And we've just got about 30 seconds left. It's not been the best of games all football-wise, but uh, there's been lots of endeavour out there. I think you give Celtic lots of credit. The first half is fairly even. Celtic maybe just a little bit more uh, advantage in possession. The second half, fairly part of the second half, they really pounded Rangers, set pieces, getting the ball inside the box, and really made life difficult for them and stopped them playing. And because of that, I think they've just deserved this victory that we're shouldn't have going to get now. Full time at Celtic Park. And the title race is blown wide open. Martin O'Neill knows it, Alec McLeish knows it. It's game on between these two after John Hartson's goal 12 minutes into the second half. Makes the difference, gives Celtic a vital three points. And it's now three between them. Celtic have a game in hand. The recriminations continue. Fernando Rickson was having a word and pointing an accusing finger towards the match officials. It's all about winners and losers. Rangers have gone down here. Celtic have got the win they so badly wanted. And as
promised, this championship challenge might well go right down to the wire. There's nothing between Celtic and Rangers over the piece. And Celtic's game in hand gives them the opportunity to go level with Rangers. This was the goal from Valharan's winning midfield challenge. And Alan Thompson to Chris Sutton for the knockdown. And a volley that even Stefan Kloss couldn't stop. Hartson's 23rd goal of the season. It's the winner for Celtic in the third Old Firm match of the season. Here's Chris Sutton. Chris, you just watched the goal again. Uh, I think it took your breath away when you saw the power of the shot. Yeah, no, I mean, John's a tremendous finisher, and uh, when he gets in positions like that, uh, he's always got a good chance of scoring. That wasn't the prettiest Old Firm game of all time, but that wouldn't bother you? No, I mean, uh, the important thing was, uh, you know, to try and win the game and, uh, and get the three points to closing on ranges. I mean, that's, uh, that's kept the race alive, really. Um, but we're still in second place, so, uh, you know, that's a, that's a good win, and uh, that's only that, really. Yeah, your manager admitted to me before the game that it really was win or bust for you today. I mean, that's the way you performed. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we've been changing, chasing uh, Rangers for most of the season. We're still behind them, but, uh, you know, three points was very valuable for us. We can have a look at the goal again, Chris. I think that your knockdown was clearly important. You, you knew exactly what you were trying to do there, didn't you? Yeah, that's all big, John. Uh, but, I mean, Alan had a lot to do um, with the ball. But, uh, you know, he's got that in his locker, Alan has. And, uh, Big John still got a hell of a lot to do from there, and uh, it's a fantastic finish. Yeah, so nothing. A couple of days uh, <laughs> relaxation, then you've got to wind yourself up again. They're just it's an incredible month for you, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big month. I mean, we knew that going into this game. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be a, a big couple of weeks, and uh, you know, another big game on Thursday. Great performance by the two of you, but uh, it'd be nice to have Mr. Larson back as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've uh, we've done reasonably well without him, but. Uh, all what he's done for the club and his scoring record, uh, you know, it's tremendous. And uh, it's, it's going to lift everybody with him being back. Great performance today, Chris. Delighted to give you the man of the match, Bank of Scotland, man of the match, Champagne. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. This will this sign the first of four massive matches for Celtic in the space of 13 days and off to the best possible start with victory in the third Old Firm match of the season. 3 all, the first one in October. 3-2 Rangers in December. And now in a mad march for Celtic in terms of the fixtures which are coming up. 1-0 Celtic. And as Chris Sutton said there, they're right back in it as far as the title race goes. Three points behind with a game in hand Sunday. Yeah, it's a massive result. We said that before the game. Martin Neal said it himself. Celtic had to get all three points today. And you've got to say they deserved it. First half, they said they're fairly even, but second half, Celtic were so determined. They're the team that created the chances, made the chances. John Harrison, we spoke about him earlier, he missed two, but as you say, the comments dropped. Didn't concern them. All good strikers, I don't worry about that. And when the, the chance came, it's a great header from Chris Sutton. But John Harrison, great composure, good first touch, bought himself lots of time and hammered the ball into the back of the net from a marvellous finisher. And really, after that, it was all Celtic. We just, just couldn't get back in the game. Alec McLeish's unbeaten record in old firm matches goes. Martin O'Neill bikes back. It's game on for the Scottish title. It certainly is. Smiling Celtic faces and Martin O'Neill tonight will surely feel that his side really were astonishingly brilliant. That is an absolutely crucial three points for them. And I don't think Kenny Rangers can have any complaints. No, I mean, I think it was about seven, eight minutes before they get the first corner. Um, and Rab Douglas had one save up until then. I mean, if uh, loving crans just after half time, but Celtic certainly. I mean, the home team, uh, the, the initiative's on you to go forward and try and try and win the game. But they took the game with the scruffy neck and they pushed on and pushed on, and it was the pressure was almost relentless. Although it wasn't creating many chances, um, I don't think Rangers can have any complaints. Um, there was no decisions that were vital that that went either way. The referee had a, had a sound enough game. Um, but I think overall in the play, I think I'll be disappointed because I think he would have expected more from his players. Yeah, I think Rangers fans tonight may be a little bit concerned. There seemed to be a, a fragility almost, not physically, but about Rangers' resources almost and the way they were beaten today, Gordon. Yeah, that's right. But mm. I think it, it was a sign that the more determined team won the game. Celtic mm. needed a result today. Mm -hmm. A lot of desire in the way they played, the way they mm. went about it, the fight and spirit they showed. And I think that maybe took Rangers a bit of a surprise. Rangers are a football inside more than they are a determined and hard-working and fighting type of team. Mm. But they just didn't get playing today. Celtic didn't allow them to play. And 
Consequently, from that platform, or the way that the Celtic had gone about their business, they forced Rangers back and they ended up getting the chance. Although uh, it was quite a, a, a strange factor that the, the goal came from a breakaway because Celtic had so much pressure, but Rangers were actually attacking when Celtic won the ball and it was a breakaway goal, but yeah. uh, very well taken by them. But I think overall, if you look at the general play, if you're watching the game, I think you'd have to say it's Celtic deserve to win on the day. I don't think there's any doubt about that. No. And it, it keeps the league title going. And, you know, Rangers just not at their best. Well, in fact, let's just confirm now. A look at the Bank of Scotland Premier League after that result. There you are. Just three points in it now. Celtic with that game in hand at Fir Park. Then they'll have eight matches each in the run. And they meet once more, of course, the final Premier League meeting of the season at Ibrox once the league splits into two. But what a run and we're now virtually guaranteed for this year's title. Let's look back over then this uh, enthralling 90 minutes at Celtic Park. As everyone said, not a whole lot of skillful football played, but it was enthralling thrilling for the effort and the commitment of every single player and the perseverance did finally pay off for John Hartson because he'd missed a couple before then Kenny hadn't he? Yeah um, I mean that's the first half that this one in the second half now and it's I mean that's bread and butter for John Hartson. Yeah, that was a really good chance that wasn't it? I think it? it must be a new haircut maybe. <laughs> um, that's that's, that's unfortunate example. there. Great example to any, any kid playing you know if you're going to score goals you're going to have to miss them as well and that's what exactly John Hartson was willing to do. This is where the Rangers move broke down. Yeah. yeah, Thompson delivered an awful lot of good crosses today. You might have got to see he was a threat on that side. Great finish. Uh, I'm a Russo. I'm a Russo can leave John Hartson. I mean, he leaves John Hartson to go and try and win the header. Watch him. He yeah. can't do that. He's got to let Bonicel look after that. Because a man for man, is, if he loses it, I mean, it's penal. And that's, what, that's how it turned out to be. It's a great ball in for Alan Thompson. All, all the decent crosses were coming for, from the left side for Celtic. But I tell you, that's great technique and great finish. Yeah, you're right, Kenny, because the Amaroots have gone there, it, it stretched Rangers back four for the first time. They'd always been in covering the right positions mm. all the time. The relationship between Moore and Amaroussa was vital. Craig Moore came across, as you might have done, and all that uh, Lorenzo Amaroussa had to do was fill in that space. You allow the ball to go to Bonacell, because in the air, if Bonacell loses the header, then you have to look look up and pick up the next man but as Kenny said he's left uh, his man there at the back post Hartson he's drifted away to try and win it as soon as, as Sutton wins the ball nods it down John Hartson's got all the time in the world although he took it really well I mean, he's, take, he's put in a nearly shot because Amoruso does get back quickly to get his challenge in but he's hit, hit it so early that it was the first time Rangers really had been, been breached in that manner in, in, a, in a Celtic attack and a normal play Yeah, classic striking you miss two or three but when a chance comes up you're there for the fourth and uh, that came 12 minutes into the second half and uh, after that for all that Rangers obviously battled back the real chances fell to Celtic for a second didn't they? Yeah, I think this is a is it Neil Lennon? That would have been a collector's item. It's a, it's a tremendous strike. He just gets up on the end of it. Um, he's looking for the ball here first time, but it comes off Craig Moore's head. But it's very unfortunate. Then that's, that's him again there, he's in. Sets this one up nicely, actually. Yeah. Hartson and Sutton. He try to, Sutton tries to turn back inside himself there to hit a bender. I mean, I think that was a, that's about as well as I've seen Neil Lennon play for Celtic. He did well today, didn't he? Um, this is a breakaway with, with Paul Lambert and Chris Sutton. Um, it's just so a little just bit too far ahead, hard, isn't it? Yeah. You've got to give Barry Ferguson credit. He makes it as difficult for him as he possibly can. He's saying, well, if it goes past me, it's going to have to be a good pass. Mm. So there were chances for number two, but one was enough. And Martin O'Neill, I'm quite sure, is absolutely delighted with his team today. The better team won today, Martin, didn't they? I thought so. I thought we were we were excellent, and uh, I can't remember too many chances. Having said that, uh, fantastic save by Rob Douglas towards the end. Great free kick. Great, great save. But if we had uh, if we dropped points today, I thought we'd have been very disappointed. We were we were the better side. You were honest enough before the game to say to me that you thought it was win or bust today. So you know of the momentum behind you, don't you, in the Championship race? Well, we're, we're back in the race again. You know, we had, we had to win today. That was very, very important. And um, we don't have to think about the league now for a couple of weeks. And that's, that's probably as, as important as anything. Uh, we've got a monumental a couple of weeks here coming up. Didier Regat's a bit of a problem. And that's that seriously is our big problem. Do you, they, do you know how serious it is with well, Regat's we, at Well, we don't know, no. It's, uh, he'll, have a scan. <clears throat> he'll have a scan tomorrow. And, uh, and we'll see. Don't don't ask me about any sort of time frame. I really don't know that. Too. What about the goal? It was a, it was a marvelous build-up and a wonderful strike, wasn't it? Absolutely. I mean, John's just said in there that uh, 
he he had visions of coming in and apologising for uh, for missing the the header, which was a, a great great chance. And the one person you know outside Henrik that uh, you'd have been delighted uh, that it would have fallen to. And I'm talking about the one that he's missed would have been uh, would have been John himself. We can have a look at the build up here. But uh, the, the goal the, was sensational. The build up, the tackle from Bohar and set the whole thing in pace, and then you really just stretched them, didn't you? After that, it's a great ball. Alan Thompson and uh, Chris Sutton, Sutton did magnificently here. That is just a wonderful finish from a wonderful player. He's terrific. You know? So it's another quiet month ahead of you. Nothing to worry about from here on in, is it? Well, we'll, we'll we're obviously delighted tonight, and uh, and we'll celebrate, I suppose, for a day. We've got to get our minds now onto Liverpool, and uh, and it's great. It's it's great for the supporters, and it's great for everyone concerned at the football club at the moment. But uh, a long way to go. I have to ask you about Henrik last night. It's a, it seems to be a, a daily question from me to you. But is it any chance of playing against the Liverpool? Well, it's not a daily question you ask me to. It's an hourly question, you know. <laughs> so um, I'll see. Four weeks. Uh, four weeks tomorrow since he's done it. We were under our orders from the surgeon, don't get into any sort of physical contact before the month's out. Henrik's a fit lad naturally anyway, and as I've often said before, and it's, it's, it's not beating around it, I just don't know exactly. But He's got a chance though. For when? For Thursday? Um, I would, would not want to put any sort of pressure on whatsoever at all, um, but the minute that Henrik gets into physical contact and comes out of it on Skaith, he'll be in business. You'll give me a call. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks Martin. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, Celtic's fabulous fortnight gets off to the ideal start with that victory this afternoon. Rangers really weren't much of a th what do you think? Yes, but I think Motherwell are more flexible than Celtic are jock because they've got Vaughan and Patridge here if he goes centre-back and Hamill can slip back to left-back and right-back, so they could be 3-5-2 or 4-4-2. Celtic. There's no, well, there's no Douglas, Mielby, Valharan, Sutton or Hartson, but that looks to be the formation for this one. 